Happy Wednesday. <laughs> hey ladies, happy Wednesday. I'm Jen Lormand, exercise physiologist, mom of three, and co founder of Tighten Your Tinkler. I'm Christina Walsh, physical therapist, mom of two, and co-founder of Tighten Your Tinkler. We're so happy to be here with you today to talk about something that is a big, big issue, big. and we know it's not just us. <laughs> nope. <laughs> big, big problem. Actually, I'll give you the stats on it. We're talking about sleep today and how women have a hard time getting a good night's rest. And actually, I've got some stats here. Your optimal window that you should be resting is seven to nine hours. Now, if you are getting that, you're doing great. You're doing <laughs> awesome. The average, and this is from a study done in 2000, the average woman between the ages of 30 and 60 are getting six hours and 41 minutes of sleep a night, which is not enough rest. Not. And even if you're getting that, I think that's freaking awesome. Yeah, that's better than what both of us have gotten in these stages, and you're probably right there with us, if we yes. can guess, because we have a lot of women in and out of here for many years, and I think Jen said that there's always a discussion that she tends to have with women very early on about this issue, because it is a huge yeah. issue in health and wellness and fitness overall. Yeah, the importance of sleep, you know, what I like to tell women is when we're sleeping is when your body is doing its housekeeping work. And I know Christina has this conversation with her patients as well. That's when the body really heals itself. That's when the body replenishes and restores itself. And so if you're not getting in that sleep zone, that quality time for your body to restore and replenish, you start getting run down, your, your immune system starts to not function well, you start to gain weight, you have more inflammation in the body, and you just start having more problems along with all of the energy things that come with that as well. So sleep is a really important piece of the puzzle, particularly when you are trying to lose weight or just, as you like to say, function, function normally. <laughs> just be alive and like feel remotely normal. So. <laughs> Jen had another statistic that she found that I thought was really cool. Yes. Um, about who's, who's waking up at night and for what. <laughs> One in every four women in that age group, 30 to 60, is waking up at night with either pain or bladder issues. Whoa. I wow. Mean, we I knew it was yeah, widespread, we but we didn't know, it, know it was that widespread. Maybe that's why we get to help so many women, <laughs> which is why we love what we do. Um, so. Jen's personal experience has led her to really understand to help you diagnose a little bit if you're having the I'm waking up to pee situation. Yes. There are different things mm -hmm. that can be causing that. There's a lot of factors at play with bladder and urinary health. And Jen has personal experience to help you troubleshoot where that bladder's waking me up at night thing is actually coming from a little bit more. Yeah, particularly I think I'm speaking to the prolapse ladies. I mean, if you have chronic, um, UTIs and you're in a UTI flare, this might not be uh, pertinent information to you because when you've got a UTI, you do feel like you need to use a restroom. Or you know, if you had several dead. drinks, uh, alcoholic beverages before yeah. you went to bed, or you have a lot of caffeine in your system, those are bladder irritants. So that's another factor if you have interstitial cystitis. That's another ball of wax you need to be managing with your physician. However, if you're dealing with just prolapse issues, just, right? Yeah, just right, prolapse yeah. issues. We didn't say it like that. <laughs> I'm making fun of myself because that is me. Um, and you notice that when you, you're waking up, when you roll over and change positions, so that positional change causes your bladder to contract and then you feel like, oh, I need to get up and use the restroom again. That used to happen to me when in the four years ago when I was first having these prolapse symptoms. And again, since doing the exercises and the interventions that we teach, I do not wake up in the middle of the night anymore to pee. And I will say this because then women ask me, oh, so you must not drink water before you go to bed. No, mm -hmm. I actually drink a huge tall glass of water with all of my nighttime supplements, which we'll talk about later that help me sleep, um, right before bed. And I still don't get up to pee, y'all. So it's possible for you too. Totally possible. I promise, and it isn't even that hard. That's why we've created the program that we have. So if that is your wake up to pee scenario, we got you back. We can help. Yeah. Check us out. It's worth a look-see. Um, but there are a lot of other sleep issues, even besides uh, the, well, and the back pain we can also help with. If the back, back is waking you up, yeah. or the hip is waking you up at night, 
our program is specifically designed to help you with that as well. But there are lots of other issues that play with sleep. Yeah. And I think we've, we've both lived different and similar versions of those issues. She's living it now. <laughs> mine was many years ago. <laughs> well, but you also had a recent yes. troubleshooting situation. So mine is my kids, right? I can't do much about that right now. There's, they've been, one had terrible respiratory problems. One has had chronic ear infections. They've been awake a lot since my first one was born four and a half years ago, and it has made me feel like a completely insane person. Emotional, yeah. terrible memory, can't focus, irritable, and the way I describe it is no bandwidth to cope with just yeah. all the little things life throws at you throughout the day. A schedule change. My husband had to go into work tonight. I didn't think he was about to. Felt like an, an epic gut punch. Gut punch. <laughs> Because you just can't, you have no bandwidth to cope with life. So we know what this feels like to be sleep deprived. Now that's not something I even knew what to do <laughs> to help with for a while. Right. But if you've been there or you are there, we understand what it's like. Um, we have put some interventions. Yes. So, and something that we encourage you to do, which is self-care. That's true. That's true. I, having kids has pushed me to the brink of closer to the brink of complete insanity than I'd ever been remotely near before. And it has forced me to implement much better proactive self-care habits for myself. And it's weird because it's at a time in my life when it's the hardest yeah. to do it from a time and financial standpoint, but I've been forced to do it because again, brink of insanity, you have to or else you're not gonna make it through the next day. So I've learned to do yeah. have regular body work appointments for my physical, the physical manifestations of all that stress. And I've actually started taking um, a hormone rebalancing supplement packet that our wonderful practitioner, Erin Kenning, who says oriental medicine. I know that yeah, she's here in New Orleans. Her. We both see her, she's amazing. But sometimes there can be hormone imbalance issues that yes. either come to play that interrupt your sleep. That wasn't my case, but I was having terrible chronic fatigue because of this crazy yeah. journey. And what I didn't realize, I was blaming it all on the sleep. What I didn't realize until I started this um, female endocrine hormone yeah, rebalancing vitamin, pack. vitamin yeah. pack, I started just taking one or two a day. And to be honest, I didn't even know what to expect. So this cannot be a placebo effect. I found that my energy levels had returned to a much more livable level just from adding this supplement pack. It was yeah. like a miracle. I was blaming all that terrible chronic fatigue I'd had for four years on the sleep deprivation, which is a big deal. Say, and which some of it probably was. Some of it was, but there is some supplementation that you can yeah. take to help remedy some of those symptoms. If you're in that, and obviously you can't deal with the source of the thing that's causing your sleep interruptions, then please take care of yourself. But I'll share a quick personal story. Aside from the bladder issues for me, my eyeballs would just decide to pop open between 2 and 2.30 in the morning and I'd be wide awake. And this happened for quite a while. And um, I also have been seeing Erin and she put me on two different supplements. She said that oftentimes, if you're having sleep disruptions in the middle of the night the way that I was, I have no problems falling asleep at night, but I had problems staying asleep at night, that you might be vitamin and mineral deficient. And that goes back to the conversation in the beginning of this talk, which is your body's doing its housekeeping work at night. And so it's needing those vitamins and minerals to facilitate all of those processes. And if you're deficient, it wakes you up in hopes that you might go and do something about this for your body, right? Because it's not able to carry out the things that it's looking to. So I've been taking um, these two, this vitamin and mineral, um, one's called Mintran and one is called Cataplex G that she has put me on. I'm not a doctor, so don't like run to Amazon and Google that and take it. Um, but I, I'm on a dose of that, and I'm gonna tell y'all a couple of days on that, and I really sleep well each night. My and goal is always seven hours. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> we are definitely all human and working moms here, for sure. But so we can recommend certain practitioners to see for that sort of situation. Yeah. We go see again this woman, her name's Erin Kenning. She is special oriental in, medicine degree. Oriental medicine. She's also an acupuncturist and she does um, NAET. NAET, which is allergy elimination technique. 
but you could see a functional medicine practitioner. practitioner yeah. Jen and I are both uh, more, much more likely to try supplements and vitamins and natural remedies before we're gonna jump into a prescription. And that's just where our preferences lie. And so yeah. we can make those recommendations to find those sorts of practitioners if you share that same preference. And also keeping in mind, a lot of the moms that I see who are in that postnatal phase of life, sometimes pregnancy throws our thyroid into a tizzy. And oftentimes, um, hypothyroidism shows up, which is a hormone regulation issue and can also cause sleep problems, memory fog, dry skin, all of those different things that you're dealing with with sleep deprivation as well. So if sleep deprivation is something that you've been dealing with on the regular, please don't just ignore it, you know. Yep, it accumulates See a practitioner, yeah. All the stress hormones, the cortisol, the cortisol. it causes end up with adrenal fatigue, which has all sorts of other implications. Yeah. It is worth investing in addressing the situation if you possibly can. And a functional med practitioner, we find that they run the best blood panels and are more open to run, uh, running those blood panels. I know that a lot of insurances don't always cover those things, but well worth the investment of your money to be able to find out concretely where you are with those levels. Yep, and even if you're on a kind of tight budget, it's amazing what you can carve out of other places if you really feel that much yes. better, speaking from personal experience. <laughs> and the quality of your life will improve dramatically yep, as well. Which is a gift to your whole oh my goodness, family. For sure. Let's get back to that. We're all more motivated to do things for our families as mamas. We know that for sure. And if you're gonna be able to take better care of your family, frame it that way. It's worth it for you, but it's definitely yes. worth it for that benefit as well. So if you have any questions about sleep problems or any of the things that we talked about, you can drop your comment below or you can message us if you're having a personal issue with regards to prolapse symptoms or any of those things. Uh, we love hearing your comments and your feedback. It really drives the content that we produce each week. So if you have something that you're dealing with that you'd like to know more about, you can always message us or drop that comment below as well. And we can't wait to see you again next week at 1 Central Standard Time. Bye, guys. <laughs>